The Lord be with you. Welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church for this, the first Sunday in Advent. Our liturgy shall be morning prayer as found on page 235, following our opening hymn, hymn 334. Rise for morning prayer. O Lord, open my lips, 
and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. to God our light and our life. to God our light and our life. Please be seated for the office hymn.
It's here for the readings. The first reading comes from Jeremiah chapter 23. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will raise to David a branch of righteousness. A king shall reign and prosper and execute judgment and righteousness in the earth. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell safely. Now this is his name by which he will be called the Lord, our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that they shall no longer say, as the Lord lives, who brought up the children of Israel from the land of Egypt, but as the Lord lives, who brought up and led the descendants of the house of Israel from the north country and from all the countries where I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land, says the Lord Almighty. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God.
The second reading is from Romans chapter 13. Brethren, you know the time, that now is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly, as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The third reading is from Matthew chapter 21. At that time, when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethpage, the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied in a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them. And immediately he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. And they brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. O Lord, have mercy on us. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. In the name of Jesus, amen. Advent means Jesus is coming. It is a season of repentance in preparation for Christmas and a season of joy, out of joy for who is to come. Romans chapter 13 is our epistle today, and there's a sense of urgency throughout the entire text. Paul has been talking about love in the three verses immediately before today's text. He's going to return to that in all of chapter 14 and the beginning of chapter 15. But before, he has to talk about some difficult things. Yes, the Holy Spirit and St. Paul are preaching law. They're talking about your holy life as a Christian. Yep, we're talking about sanctification. You know the time. That now it is high time to wake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. As Christians, as the baptized... Our lives are given to be different than the unwashed pagan world. Be ready for Christ's return. Paul says it rather bluntly. Christ's return is nearer than ever before. So too, all of us are closer to death, closer to our heavenly birthday than ever before before. If there's been anything inside of you that's saying, yeah, I'll, I'll get right with God, I'll do that church stuff, I'll read my Bible later, I urge you not to delay. Now is the time. Now it is high time to awake out of spiritual slumber. I found an interesting quote it deserves some explanation because of the 50 cent word in it, but a pastor would love a phrase like this. 
Eschatology drives ethics. If you know the time is short in getting your homework in, you're going to be really focused or really nervous or both. Hopefully efficient and turn in good homework. Eschatology is the study of the last things, the end of the world, the second coming, the judgment, the end of our lives. It is sad to hear someone on their deathbed, even in a movie, say, you know, I just figured out how to live my life. Hasn't the Lord been explaining this all along? And yeah, that's the law part of this text. Your alarm is going off. Now is the time. The time for what? Paul, too, gets very specific here. Let's hear him again. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. I love the contrast here because we're not just hearing law anymore. You get armor of light. It's the really cool armor we hear about in Ephesians after we hear about love again from St. Paul and the Holy Spirit, after we hear about our vocations as husbands, wives, parents, and children. The armor of light is the righteousness of your Savior, Jesus Christ. Therefore, cast off, put away, Get rid of everything that is included in works of darkness. Anything you're embarrassed about, Jesus forgives. Anything you're guilty about, Jesus forgives. And not just that, he takes away the guilt for that age-old sin. Let us walk properly as in the day. Properly means with your head up, not pointed up in pride, not down low in shame, but properly. So your doctor, your mother, and your chiropractor will be happy. Walk properly, as is fitting, as is appropriate for the lives of the baptized. Jesus loves you. And as we love our neighbors, We show his love with our love. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy. There's a lot here that's being condemned. It's usually stuff that people are later embarrassed about or ashamed about because they didn't use proper judgment in the moment. And three words on this could be translated even more clearly, but then all of us would be blushing. Let me just say that three of the words that Paul condemns have sixth commandment problems. Cast off darkness. Instead, enjoy the light of Christ's righteousness that covers all of your sin. Enjoy Christ, his forgiveness, his life, the fresh start he gives you, and his love for you. Put on. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. The light, the armor of light is Jesus Christ himself. His righteousness, won for you on the cross, and by his victorious resurrection from the dead. We're near the end of the regular season of college football, at least. Put on the shoulder pads, put on the jersey, put on the helmet, put on all the protective equipment of the armor of light that Jesus died to give you. This is a gift of Christ. And then there's a very awkward ending. And make no provision for the flesh to fulfill 
its lusts. Have you ever heard this pitch from a salesman of insurance? If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. We pre-plan so many things, big trips, Christmas wish lists for ourselves, what we should buy, the ones that we love. We pre-plan so much, even sometimes our funeral arrangements. But there's one pre-planning that the Lord does not give you permission to do. And that is pre-planning sin. No premeditated anything. Why? It's spiritually dangerous. You're essentially saying to yourself, let's misuse the death of Jesus. Let's take for granted the grace of God. Let's do what I want to now and plan to repent later. How dare us presume on the grace and mercy of God? He is merciful and gracious to be sure and loving. But the Lord your God is a jealous God, a zealous God. He did not give you Christ in order to invent cheap grace. Instead, plan godly things. As a season of preparation, we do have extra services. In fact, we have chapel every day during the week, and you're invited. We have special Wednesday evening services at 7 o'clock that have an Advent theme. This is in addition to our weekly Wednesday services every Wednesday, except for Holy Week at 7 o'clock. We have a variety of devotional materials for you, too, from meditations and portals of prayer to a new Advent devotion to consider adding to your routine. I'm not asking you to give up something for Lent. We're not there yet. This is Advent. But as a season of repentance, a season of joy, we show our appreciation for the gospel, the gifts we have received from Jesus Christ including his righteousness, the armor of light, and the gift of himself as we return to the Lord what he has given us. That primary gift is his word, the very words which Jesus proclaims that he loves you, he died for you, and he is coming back for you. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Benedictus is found on page 238. The Kyrie will follow as a solo. Please stand.
thy child shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, Let us pray. O oh, stir up your power, O Lord, and come. That by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For unashamed hope in the Lord's return, that sustained by his Holy Spirit we may have joy at the advent of Christ our Savior, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the Holy Church, that God would preserve her against all enemies and lead his people to walk in his ways and follow his paths, so that when Jesus returns in his glory we may welcome him with gladness, glad hosannas. Let us pray to the Lord. For Christian homes, that God would defend husbands, wives, and children from the temptation to walk in the works of darkness, clothing them with the armor of light, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have For our nation, as leaders in our armed forces, that God would take them under his care and let his blessing rest upon them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have For the sick, the suffering, and those in need, for the family of friends of Jesse Krausnick, for Charlie, Eric, Reverend Neil Carlson, Charlotte, Joanne, Bob and Bev, Evelyn, Pat, Leslie, Ken, Bob, Richard, Denise, Hannah and Brian, Bill and Judy, Tom, Rebecca, Bob and Chris, Cliff, Matt, Margo, Robert, Jacob, Paul and Tyson, that our Father in heaven would ease their pain, increase their faith, and grant them healing and peace in accordance with his own wisdom and will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Holy God, you declare that the days were coming when you would accomplish our salvation, and in your time you caused your Son, this righteous branch, to spring up for David. By your grace, keep us joined as branches to Christ, that we might bear fruit until the day he returns in glory. For he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. Let us bless the Lord. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Please be seated for the hymn. Thank you. 